Don't let its vintage looks fool you. This is a Fender Supersonic 22. Customers brought it in because apparently it makes a god awful hum and noise when you turn it on, which straight away, being a modern Fender, we can already kind of take a guess at exactly what the issue is going to be. But I'll still power it on, I'll test it up, I'll crack it open, and I'll confirm that. What we're going to do is give it a proper service, make sure those caps are dealt with, because that is the most likely culprit. And the customer's also requested a new set of tubes, because um, he thinks the old ones might be a bit microphonic. Good news is, is that JJ have now made a new version of their 6v6s, that have a double mica in there. So the double mica literally just works to hold everything all together a lot tighter, which in a combo amp like this is a big, big advantage. You've got the speaker moving, you've got air moving, that's going to rattle the absolute ever-loving hell out of those tubes. So being able to hold the internals a lot firmer is going to help minimize the chance of potential shorts, minimizes microphonics, and is going to give them a sort of bit of a longer life because they're not being absolutely you know, hammered. Let's power it on. Let's take a listen and see just how bad this might actually be. First up, of course, is the precursor to an internal investigation, an external one. This has the original tubes, as it would have shipped with, so a set of GT groove tubes, uh, 6v6s, which are kind of, <laughs> kind of funny and inconsistent because you've got um, this one here that's a little bit more bulbous and tall. This one's actually short with a very, very flat bottom to it, which is kind of funny. They don't look like they're gassy or having any issues or anything like that, which is quite nice. However, I'm not seeing any of the getter in there, you know, the flash, flashing, the metal on the inside you normally see, so that might actually be up in the base on those there. I'll give it a bit of a quick check, just quickly pull those out, open up the bear traps and pull it. Yep, okay, cool, so that's all down the bottom there in the base. So, I'm not seeing any immediate discoloration, which is good, so 10 bucks says the tubes are okay from like an electrical standpoint. In goes that one, give this one a quick pull. There we come, there we go. <clears throat> yep, so this one's not gassy either, which is excellent. And just plonk that back in, make sure there's no other issues with tubes. Yep, that's good, that's good. That one looks perfectly happy. Yep, that one looks okay as well, and there's another one hiding back here. The one back there looks perfectly happy as well. Because this has potentially got a short in it, I'm going to power it on. However, I'm going to bring it up on the Variac and just keep an eye on the power consumption. Just to make sure there's no wild shorts or anything else like that in there. And away we go. All right, so we're about halfway up, and nothing's going crazy thus far, which is good. So if there was a dead short, we'd probably be seeing a massive amount of current draw right now. But we are not, which is nice. So if we keep pushing it up, we're going to start hearing buzz once those tubes conduct. There we go. Awful sound. So that is definitely unpleasant. That definitely sounds like 100 hertz noise, which would be coming after the rectifier. Meaning, we take a look inside, we're gonna find some leaky caps, no surprises. Now I've had fewer scruples. I could probably pretend that I'm some kind of absolute, you know, fortune telling master and knew everything about the future. But the reality is I'm just a half decent tech who knows regular faults and things I've seen over time and things that other techs have seen as well. Point in case, these IC branded caps. Fender started specking them like that in the 90s and they went for the cheapest ones they could. They've cut a couple of cents off the bill of materials, which for us may not mean much, but a company that does like 10,000 amps a month, that's a fair bit of profit over a year. 
So they will always leak. You know, people like myself, Brad at Brad's Guitar Garage, Lyle at Psionic Audio, we harp on about this all the time. You know, I'm not gonna say anything about it in future because everyone already knows, but sure enough, when I turned it on and I heard that sound, I knew what was going on. And if we look in here, we can actually see that there is, on the end of that cap there, the typical electrolyte bleeding out. That means that that cap is no longer functioning the way it should, so it's not dumping that 100 hertz noise to ground. It's passing it on to the rest of the signal. It sucks because this amp, has like two of those caps in there, the axial caps, but the rest of them are radial. They could have just put radial caps in there as well and be done with it because radial caps tend to be higher rated, tend to last longer, they're a lot cheaper as well. Especially in a new amp design like this, there's no reason that they had to stick with the old fashioned axials. Oh, it does my head in. So I will get those caps out, I will replace them, I will also replace the radials just in case. I'm going to put in some you know, good quality niche cons in there that I've got on hand for this kind of job. And then once I've got those out, I will give it a test. I've got the 6v6 double micers on the order, so they should hopefully be here sometime this week. And then once I've got all that in there, I can power it up, test it, and make sure that it's doing what it needs to do. And hopefully send this back to the customer without a huge massive bill to it. The Supersonics weren't the greatest amps that Fender did, unfortunately. So I'm gonna get these tubes in once I've got those and I've got those caps changed out and that. We'll take a look at it on the next episode and hopefully things all work well. Then we can just do a sound demo and send it on its way back to the customer. But in the meantime, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the like button and the bell notification because that really does help. As much as we all hate it, we're gonna to pray to the Lord of the algorithm, because if we don't, well, you know, very few people are gonna see these, even if you are subscribed. You know, if you've got any questions or anything, leave them down in the comment section below, because I'm always looking for interesting questions that I can answer on live streams, which you can join us on here, or even on standalone videos like the one I've got coming up soon. So until the next time, we'll see ya.